good evening and Merry Christmas. I'm so happy that you are here and we will have, this is a celebratory evening. Um, you'll have a little bit of scripture and then you'll have, we'll get to sing all the carols that we never get to sing. Um, especially when you have a difficult pastor like this church does. And we'll let you sing Christmas carols during the Advent season. So uh, tonight's the night and we're trying to make it, you know, so we're not singing seven verses of all 15 hymns but we'll get a flavor of each of them. So I welcome you to worship this day, and I'm happy for all of you to be here as we celebrate and remember the birth of the Savior of thousands of years ago, who also uh, is as relevant today as he was then. So without further ado, let us enjoy a beautiful musical offering from our own Alice and Joanne. For great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. 
Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and those who live in it. Let the whole creation sing for joy at the presence of God who is coming. God is coming indeed to judge the earth with righteousness and the peoples with equity and truth. Praise the Lord. Please be in prayer with me. Eternal God, from the tabernacle of heaven to the poverty of a stable, your radiant light shines forth in a tiny baby wrapped in rags. Such humble love astounds us. In Jesus you have become one with us that we might become one with you. Open our hearts to joyfully receive his love that he may be born in us and we in him through Christ our Lord. Amen. We will sing all of hymn number 249, O Come All Ye Faithful.
and by following in his path that true peace can be found. Christ brings the peace of God to us. He calls us to share the peace he gives with each other. We light the candle of joy to remind us that God gives joy to every heart that abides in him. As Mary rejoiced in the birth of Jesus, so his birth in us brings us joy. God calls us to share the joy he gives with each other. We light the candle of love to remind us that Jesus is God's gift of love to us and that in him, the light of love triumphs over darkness. Love never fails. It transforms all those who give it and receive it. God calls us to share his love with each other. We light the Christ candle to remind us that the light of the world was born this night. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them a light has shined. You, O Lord, have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. For to us a child is born. To us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. He is also called Emmanuel, for in him God is with us. Let us pray. It's in your bulletins. Almighty God, you have made this night holy by the gift of your Son, born of the Holy Spirit and of Mary. Upon him rested all your grace. Through him has come all your mercy. Let his light shine within our hearts tonight even more brightly than it shines from the candles in this place. Help us to hear your word and to celebrate your everlasting love through him. Amen. Our first lesson is from Genesis. This is chapter 3, verses 8 through 15 and 17 through 19. Adam and Eve heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. God said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman who you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit from the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent tricked me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you among all animals and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go, and dust shall you eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head, and you will strike his heel. And to the man he said, because you have eaten of the tree about which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you shall eat bread until you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken. You are dust, and to dust you shall return. 
Hymn number 250, verses 1, 2, and 4.
light. Those who live in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Number 251, verses 1, 2, and 4. It came upon a midnight clear. 251. Hymn number 244, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus, we will sing all three, all two verses, both of them.
those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and it was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. Away in a manger, 262, 1 and 2. Oh. 
chapter 2. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent to Bethlehem, saying, sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. We will now have a different kind of gift. We will have a, a Ben Patterson in the sing for us, Mary, did you know? We do not take an offering at this service, but there are plates in the narthex. If you wish to make a donation as you depart, please feel free to do so. But you are not obligated in any sense. Ben, the floor is yours. Thank you, Pam. Uh, who needs cleaners? Show of hands. Nan's got hers. 
It's a devastating uh, and beautiful carol, and you did such a beautiful job. Then. Thank you so much. Okay. Ninth lesson, John 1, 1 through 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light, which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came to be through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Let us celebrate Joy to the World, number 270, verses 1, 2, and 4. <coughs> 270. Um. Christ coming to earth 
What we must never forget is that's not the last surprise God has in store. God continues to surprise. And a part of what we need to have our eyes, our hearts, and our minds open to is to see the surprising things that God has for us in our ordinary, pedestrian, mundane lives. It, it's, we're not going to see a star and no magi are going to come and, and lead us to uh, the birth of the Son of God. But God will surprise us every day if we but look. Because that is who God is love. But the way he loves us is almost always unexpected, out of the ordinary, and truly surprising. So be surprised this Christmas season. Be surprised in 2024. Don't anticipate you know what God is doing and you know what God is going to do. Let him surprise you with the grace, the mercy, the joy that he will bring you. Open the eyes of your heart. Open the eyes of your spirit. Open the eyes of your mind so that God's surprising actions can be seen by you and by all of us. And that is my message for this Christmas Eve. So, if you will, uh, be in prayer with me. Oh, no, we're lighting candles. Aren't we lighting candles now? Somebody tell me what we're doing. I only have a pro. Okay, I think we're praying, so let's pray. Gracious and holy God, on this night, we have heard how the world into which Jesus was born was ruled by a governor, emperor, and a king. Yet this story reveals that you, O oh God, are the only true sovereign, almighty and everlasting. We thank you that justice and righteousness are in your hands. We praise you for the peace you have promised. Most especially, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, the light of the world, who dwells among us, who dwells in us, full of grace and truth. Amen. Now we have uh, we have fire to attend to. So our dad, are you doing the big candle? So um, dad is going to light up a big candle from the Christ candle, and then we will, um, and then we will. Um, everybody gets lit. <laughs> Thank you. 